Peter Lynch is considered to be one of the best investors of all time. His average annualized return is 29%, and that is an average over 13 years in which he has been the chairman of the Fidelity Magellan Fund. If you compare this 29% to the S&P 500, which have an average return of around 10% annually, it's a huge difference. Here are some other numbers. Peter Lynch is net worth is around $352 million. To this day, his performance was the best in the whole mutual fund field ever. When he was named the head of the Fidelity Magellan Fund, it has an 18 million of assets under management. But when he resigned, there was 14 billion assets under management and it took him only 13 years. So Peter Lynch is definitely someone you should listen to. So here is his opinion. The single, the single most important thing to me in the stock market for anyone is to know what you own. I'm amazed how many people own stocks. They, they would not be able to tell you why they own it. They couldn't say in a minute or less why they own it. Actually, if you really press them down, they'd say the reason I own this is the sucker is going up. I mean, that's the only reason, that's the only reason they own it. And if you can't explain, I'm serious, you can't explain to a 10 year old in two minutes or less why you own a stock, you shouldn't own it. And that's true, I think about 80% of people that own stocks. And this is the kind of stock people like to own. This is the kind of company people adore owning. It's a relatively simple company. They make a, a very uh, narrow, easy to understand product. They make a one megabit SRAM, CMOS, bipolar risk, floating point, data IO, array processor, an optimizing compiler, a 16 dual port memory, a double diffused metal oxide semiconductor monolithic logic chip with a plasma matrix vacuum fluorescent display. It has a 16-bit dual memory. It has a Unix operating system, four whetstone megaflop polysilicon emitter, a high bandwidth, that's very important, six gigahertz, <laughs> double metallization communication protocol, an asynchronous backward compatibility, peripheral bus architecture, four-wave interleave memory, a token ring and change backplane, and it does it in 15 nanoseconds of capability. Now, if you own a piece of crap like that, <laughs> you will never make money. Never. Somebody will come along with more whetstones or less whetstones or a bigger mega flop or a smaller mega flop. You won't have the foggiest idea what's happened. And people buy this junk all the time. I made money in Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> I can understand it. I, uh, when there was recessions, I didn't have to worry about what was happening. I could go there and people were still there. I didn't have to worry about low-priced Korean imports. I mean, I just didn't have, you know, I can understand it. And you laugh, I made 10 or 15 times my money in Dunkin' Donuts. Those are the kind of stocks I can understand. If you don't understand it, it doesn't work. This is the single biggest principle. And it bothers me that people are very careful of their money. The public, when they buy a refrigerator, they get a consumer report, so they buy a microwave oven, they do that. They ask people what's the best kind of radar range or, they, or what kind of car to buy. They do research on apartments. When they, go to, when they go on a trip to Wyoming, they get the mobile travel guide or California. When they go to Europe, they get the Michelin travel guide. People will hear a tip on a bus on some stock and they'll put half their life savings <laughs> in it before sunset. And they wonder why they lose money in the stock market. And when they lose money, they blame it on the institutions and program trading. That is garbage. They didn't do any research. They bought a piece of junk. They didn't look at the balance sheet. And that's what you get for it. And that's what we were being driven to. And it's self-fulfilling. The public does terrible investing, and they, they say they don't have a chance. It's because that's the, way they're, that's the way they're acting. I'm trying to convince people there is a method. There are reasons for stocks that go up. Uh, Coca-Cola, this is very magic. It's a very magic number. Easy to remember. Coca-Cola is earning 30 times per share what they did 32 years ago. The stock has gone up 30-fold. Bethlehem Steel is earning less than they did 30 years ago. The stock is half its price of 30 years ago. Stocks are not lottery tickets. There's a company behind every stock. If a company does well, the stock does well. It's not that complicated. People get too carried away. And first of all, they try and predict the stock market. That is a total waste of time. No one can predict the stock market. They try to predict interest rates. I mean, this is a, if anybody would predict interest rates right three times in a row, they'd be a billionaire. 
considering there's not that many billionaires on the planet, it's very, you know, I took, I had logic, so I had a syllogism and uh, studied these when I was at Boston College. There can't be that many people that can predict interest rates because there'd be lots of billionaires. And no one can predict the economy. I had a lot of people in this room were around in 1981 and 82 when we had a 20% prime rate with double digit inflation, double digit uh, unemployment. I don't remember anybody telling me in 1981 about it. I didn't read, I studied all this stuff. I don't remember anybody telling me we're going to have the worst recession since the Depression. So, what I'm trying to tell you, it'd be very useful to know what the stock market is going to do. It'd be terrific to know that the Dow Jones average a year from now would be X, that we're going to have a full scale recession, or interest rates going to be 12%. That's useful stuff. You never know it, though. You just don't get to learn it. So, I've always said if you spend 14 minutes a year on economics, you've wasted 12 minutes. And I, I, I really believe that. Now, I have to be, I'd be fair, I'm talking about economics on the broad scale, predicting the downturn for next year or the upturn or M1 and M2, 3B and all these, all these Ms. The, uh, I'm talking about economics to me is when you talk about scrap prices. When I own auto stocks, I want to know what's happening to used car prices. When used car prices are going up, it's a very good indicator. When I own hotel stocks, I want to know hotel occupancy is about. When I own chemical stocks, I want to know what's happening to the price of ethylene. These are facts. If aluminum inventories go down five straight months, that's relevant. I can deal with that. Home affordability, I want to know about that. When I own uh, Fannie Mae or I own a housing stock. These are facts. You can, they're economic facts and it's economic predictions. And economic predictions are a total waste. And uh, interest rates, Alan Greenspan's a very honest guy. He would tell you that he can't predict interest rates. He could tell you what short rates are going to do in the next six months. Try and stick them on what the long-term rate will be three years from now. They'll say, I don't have any idea. So how are you, the investors, supposed to predict interest rates if the head of the Federal Reserve can't do it? So I think that's, uh, but you should study history, and history is the important thing you learn from. What you learn from history is the market goes down. It goes down a lot. The math is simple. There's been 93 years a century. This is easy to do. The market's had 50 declines of 10% or more. So 50 declines in 93 years. About once every two years, the market falls 10%. We call that a correction. That means, that's a euphemism for losing a lot of money rapidly, but we, you know, we call it a correction. And uh, uh, so 50 declines in 93 years, about once every two years, the market falls 10%. Of those 50 declines, 15 have been 25% or more. That's known as a bear market. We've had 15 declines in 93 years. So every six years, the market's gonna have a 25% decline. That's all you need to know. You need to know the market's going to go down sometime. If you're not ready for that, you shouldn't own stocks. And it's good when it happens. If you like a stock at 14 and it goes to 6, that's great. You understand the company, you look at the balance sheet, and they're doing fine. And you're hoping to get to 22 with it. 14 to 22 is terrific. 6 to 22 is exceptional. So you take advantage of these declines. They're going to happen. No one knows when they're going to happen. It would be very, people tell you about it after the fact that they predicted it, but they predicted it 53 times. And uh, so you can take advantage of the volatility market if you understand what you own. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to hit the like button. And for more videos like this one, feel free to subscribe and turn on the notification. Also, if you think this is worth sharing with your friends, please do so.